What is going on, Bucks fans, NCFP fans? Evan Wanish here back at you with yet another video talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I am not alone in this one. I am joined by Mr. Bucks Nation, James Hill. You know him. Some love him. Uh, how are you doing tonight, James? Good. We're on to the tight ends now in terms of our overall, uh, whatever the word may be, in terms of our overall positional reviews. Um, yes. And we've had a good couple of ones so far up to this point and uh, excited to dive into this one, man. Yeah, you know, the, the tight end room was, again, something where I think with Dave Canales coming in, coming from Seattle, um, I, I think there was an expectation that the Buccaneers will be using the tight end a bit more than the Bruce Arians offense you use the tight end. Uh, even though during a Bruce Arians offense, they had guys like OJ Howard and Rob Gronkowski, like they had like legit like dudes, right? Even like Cameron Bray, uh, towards a little, I know towards the end, he got a little bit, you know, uh, slower, I, I guess, but, um, you know, I mean, there was a lot of talent in that tight end room at one point and this year it was a lot different and it was a lot of young guys. I mean, Kate Otten, second year, Co'Keefe, second year, Payne Durham, rookie, David Wells, a young, I believe a youngish player. Um, so there was a lot of, I don't know if I would say hope, but you, you're kind of hoping that a guy like Kate Otten would be able to step up and show you like Rashad White did at times, right? For the running back position that Kate Otten could show you that, Hey, you know, he can be a legit tight end one on this team. And there were times when Kate Otten showed that there were definitely times when, when and look, just like with the quarterbacks that we talked about, we talked about Baker Mayfield on that one, right? This is mostly going to be about Kate Otten. <laughs> like it's, it's just is. Um, but Kate Otten at times showed like that he could be a tight end one in that Philly game. He was the Bucks leading receiver, I believe. Correct. It's, you know, kind of insane uh, in a playoff game that Kate Otten is going to be leading your team. Definitely under in interceptions. Uh, and he also had a few drops in that game too. So could have had an even better day. And then against the lions had a touchdown, had a few nice catches as well. So, he at times uh, showed that he could be a tight end one. That being said, at other times, you could sort of tell that, hey, I, I think the Bucks, excuse me, the Bucks offense could use the benefit of having a dynamic tight end. Maybe not an elite guy, right? You don't need the George Kittle, the Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, stuff like that. But I think sometimes, at, at times, the offense was lacking that, uh, downfield threat at the tight end position. A guy who, uh, you know, Kate Otten's, I believe his yards like per catch on average or like per reception on average was uh, in the single digits still. So that tells me that you know, he's catching a lot of check downs. He's, there's not really, they're not really putting him downfield much. So it's basically the question of, you know, what did you think of Kate Otten's ear? And do you think he showed enough heading into this 2024 off season that's going to feature a brand new offensive coordinator? Uh, Heading into this offseason, do you think he showed enough to continue to be the tight end one for this team that he was in the 2023 season? Cade feels like a fringe number one to me. Um, he, he feels like he's on that mend. He was fifth in targets this year with 67, um, fourth in receptions with 47, fourth in yards with 455, and then actually second in touchdowns to Mike Evans with four so uh that's kind of dude mike evans had a wild year good lord um but you you were right his yards per reception was 9.7 um and that's where you look for maybe a more athletic deep threat kind of guy um you know is Cade bad no is he startable yeah but you can certainly upgrade i feel like in my opinion um the other guys you have in that group Payne Durham, seven targets, five catches, 58 yards. Koki, five targets, one catch, two yards, and a touchdown. One uh, catch, one touchdown. That's efficiency, baby. And then David Wells, two targets, two catches for negative 10 yards. And and that was a fumble. So, yeah, David yeah. Wells did not have the best impression. Yeah, and then you have Tanner Taula on the roster as well. Um, So, you know, man, it's an interesting group. I personally feel like if you – you could go out there and get a legit number one, I think. And and that wouldn't, or even just another fringe number one guy and just have a good tight end duo that can make up for that. You know what I mean? Nothing against Payne Durham, but he doesn't really scream to me as a number two tight end right now. Um, mm -hmm. A guy that you can put out there in two tight end sets and both are legit weapons. 
Um, maybe that'll change. I mean, he certainly got the size for it, but uh, personally, if it was me, I would go out and maybe look to get a, a legitimate number one guy. Yeah, I, I would as well. And obviously it's easier said than done. Uh, and, and we're not talking about, you know, going out and getting the, the star guy, but Hey, maybe you invest a second round pick or a third round pick in a guy that you have, uh, you know, faith in. I know, uh, I believe Jatavion Sanders, uh, from Texas is a guy who in the second round could potentially be available to the Buccaneers. And I think he could have the potential to be like your number one guy. Kate Otten, like you said, I, I agree with what you said. He's a good player. Like, like he is a, he has a role on a football team. I just think that role on a championship team is probably more of the tight end two uh, than that tight end one, that first option, especially if, and again, this, all might all depend on who the new offensive coordinator is, which we don't know at this point as of this recording, uh, which I'm sure if they've already announced it by the time this is out, you guys will be commenting, well, it's, you know, so-and-so. So of course he's going to use the tight end, but um, you know, it's somebody who, if they want to keep continue to use the tight end and the tight end is going to be a big part of their offense, the Bucks may not have a choice, but the upgrade from Kate Otten. And while that doesn't mean cutting him, of course, he's still going to be on the roster. He's still going to be a valuable piece. Like you said, I think it's, Payne Durham fits better as a tight end three than a tight end two. Kate Otten probably fits better than as a tight end two than a tight end one. Coquith, not sure that dude's going to be on the roster next year. Like, uh, just, you know, just not sure uh, because they didn't really use him much this year. His usage went down with Canales, and who knows what the new offensive coordinator is going to do. So I could, just like we talked about with the running back room, I think this is another room where behind Kate Otten and Payne Durham, because Payne Durham was just drafted. He has a whole rookie contract. Those two or three spots I think could be filled by brand new pieces. I agree hundred percent with that. Like, you know, you could have a new number one uh, this off season. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, like the, the, the whole room, just move these guys down one, mm -hmm. you know, like, as I feel like the fix move them there. down one peg, you know, just yeah. On the depth chart, you know, like go out, spend a little bit of money, get in a number one. Um, Kate is a solid number two. And if he develops for one more year, maybe he could be more of a number one. But um, just right now, it just doesn't, you can just get, and even if they didn't upgrade, I wouldn't be like, oh, this is going to suck. If, if Cade's your number one, fine. At the yeah. very least, get a solid number two behind Yes, one I, of the, I, I, I think that's a must. One of those two things needs to happen. It's either, okay, you're going to get a new number one and Cade's going to be the number two, or you're going to get a number two who is competing with Cade for that number one spot. Yes, and a guy that's like definitively better than Payne Durham. Like, yes, just, I agree with that. Yeah, you, you just need that. Whether, you know, no matter who the offensive coordinator is, like whether they're going to prioritize tight end or not, like to me, you just need that. Um, right. So, yeah, but uh, let us know what you guys think about Kate Otten's season. Let us know what you think about the rest of the tight end room. Do you think maybe a guy like Payne Durham has some potential? Uh, he was supposed to be his red zone threat. The Buccaneers didn't really use him in the red zone much, but zero uh, touchdowns. And... Yeah, I mean, he did get robbed of one in Indy, though. Uh, that one should have been a touchdown, I think. But a uh, great catch, by the way. I don't know if you remember that play. But um, again, Coquif, right? Do you think Coquif still has something left in the tank? Not sure he does, but again, that efficiency, man, one catch, one touchdown, that'll play. So, um, yeah, I, I do think that we could see a, an overhauled tight end room, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Thank you so much for joining me, James, for these past few videos here. Like I said, it's come full circle. I did the position group previews for James's channel. Now for the Campfire Podcast, we are doing the position group reviews. And this won't be the last positional group review that you see James on. Uh, but yeah, I just want to say, you know, appreciate you joining us. And uh, where can the people find you other than YouTube? Uh, yeah, on Twitter, on Instagram, I'm all Mr. Bucks Nation. So pretty simple, right? So uh, definitely, uh, you know, tune in some stuff. I'm, I'm trying to, uh, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm always posting content on YouTube. Good Lord. It's basically, it's almost 24-hour round. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it's like CNN. It's, it's it, it, MBN, CNN, same thing. It's, it's the same thing. Brutal. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> yeah. brutal. But um, yeah, guys, no, greatly appreciate being on here. Um. And yeah, can't can't wait to see more of these as they come out. Yeah, so uh, like I said, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and go Bucks. <laughs>